Hello and welcome to Wise Man Channel. Today we're going to talk about this. This is a door simulator. It looks a bit different from what we normally see, but it looks like this. Hmm. It's the same style, but the whole thing is a little bit different. Now, we all seen door simulators before. And, you know, you take a reader, a genuine reader, you hook up a power source, you add a screen, and you read out the vegan data over the data wise. But this one is a little bit different. This is a Paxton door simulator. And it used to be the only one in the world, but now it's not. So bear with me as I start to walk you through what's different with this one. First of all, I want to say some words about how I ended up with this door simulator. Now, I was at B-Size London back in December, and there I met up with some UK hackers. Among one of them was n 4 Now, he made this one for me, that was very kind of him, and back then it was the one, and, <laughs> one of a kind in the world. Since then, I know that some of other UK hackers has made their own version of it. But that's for another story, another video. Now, what's the difference with this one is that Paxton doesn't use VGAN. It has something that's called clock and data. Now, they also have their own access tokens. They don't use facility code and card numbers straight out of the box, like you see otherwise for your HID. But you have something called access tokens. They use two different kinds of access tokens. One is for the Net2 installation. Uh, which I think is the on-prem version. And then you have the Switch 2, which is the cloud version of it. But we also have potential third access credential that is called GDX Indigo, but it's sold by Stanley Pack. So I think it's an OEM thing. Uh, Paxson also uses a different way to enroll a card on the readers with something that's called a knockout card. Now, a shout out to all of you UK hackers who made all of this. It's amazing to see what you've done. And I'm having tremendous fun. Hanging out with you guys and B-Size was really, really awesome. Let us see of this little thing then, shall we? We can see it straight out of the bat. It has three LEDs and the screen and is mounted to the case. I will just try to see if I can open this one. I have already removed the screws because, you know, like you bake a cake and that's how you do it. Or maybe this one side. Here you go. For the normal dorm simulators, there's, you know, the vegan wire comes out from the yellow and blue up here, data one and data zero. But this is then data, which is the yellow wire. And then the blue here is the clock wire. What you see up here is me trying to add a, uh, to pull up the resistors. Normally with this has only six pins, this door simulator and the ESP3, but we also have some extra pin connectors down here. So this is for the yellow uh, LED. And if you wanna have a green and red LED, it is the brown cable and the green cable. So these are the LED cables. No speakers, just LEDs. I think this is kind of nice. It's a nice form factor, everything like that. If you turn around, hook up some power. As we see here, it shows up that it's a Paxton reader and SSD and password is custom made for this, of course. Um, and for who made this one, made this in micro Python. So it's a little bit slow, a little bit testing. We will uh, be able to look at the website UI when we hook up to that access point in a second. Let's present it with one of the readers, with a card. So Paxton uses something that is called high tag two and low frequency cards, and they have access tokens. So this is a net two token. And if I present a one of these ones, it will tell us that it's a knockout card switch too, a little bit different. And you also have this, they also have this key fobs. Very small, very hard to read otherwise, but with a door simulator, this is not an issue. You see how it identifies the, the color of this one as well. So if we present another tag at the same time, 
you will see that it comes and updates the user interface here up here. So this is the last thread, so you can see the card number, the hex data that's transmitted, what type it was in colors, right? If I present a copy of an high tag, it's the same thing. Boop. You have a CTF mode, like usual for this one here. And in the settings, you can choose if you want to be in CTF mode or in demo mode. This is not fully developed in that sense, and he made it, you know, N4Ab made this as a demo for me. So it's kind of nice. One of the questions is why and what you're going to do with a door simulator. Now, the thing with a door simulator is that you actually learn how to simulate. You can, for, you know, if you have a device, if you have a flipper, if you want to implement the support for high tech 2 there, you can actually read up and, and simulate. You can sniff, you can look at the traffic and all that goes on. So, a little bit of history behind this, and it is the following. Because it's quite an interesting story, it should be a good story. But this all begins back in 2017 and 2018 when Kev Sheldrake, who I mentioned before, added the high tag 2 attacks to R Fiddler. Now, this opened up for a bunch of different Juke hackers to be able to sniff and recover the high tag 2 password that is used with its credentials. So, what they figured out, those people, is that Paxton uses high tag 2, and the use is either in crypto mode or in password mode. Well, that's what's possible for high tag 2, but Paxton uses the password mode. So it's a known key, or password. And once they have that, they were now able to dump these cards and make a copy of it. But they couldn't change or create a completely new credential, like you can with facility code and card number, so we can't. Now this all changed in around 2020, when the hacker was figured out the Paxton Net2 encoding scheme. So he was the first to do that. And now we could decode the number that came out, a reader like this over the clock and data wires, to the hex data that is stored on these uh, cards. When Waz told N4Rab about how this works, he, N4Rab, figured out how the switch to, which is a little bit complete different way because the first one that two uses two blocks and the switch two uses four blocks of data on these cards. So he figured out that one. Now Waz also told some other hacker called Nat Natum and he wrote a blog post and published a Paxton decoder and you will find that one over at let's see if we can go into browse mode and we go to This is his blog post where he talked about how to copy and read with our fiddler, with flipper, and how to do things. But he also did the convert. So you have this here is how to convert back in front to the net two credentials because it's only two blocks, page four and five. So that's cool. What more what happened was and for app helped more hackers around this. And he actually taught another hacker called Equipped. You know, he's one of our guys on the RFID hacking Discord. And he helped, and for I helped him to decode their fob. And Equip actually wrote a he's quite active on the dangerous things forum. So for them, there was a thread of and the questions there. He wrote just recently a dangerous wiki entry for how to do cloning and decoding of these signals. So it all helped there. Now, two years ago, 2023 it is, I think uh, Natum, the hacker, actually added the .NET um, no, he didn't have the .NET. No, no, no. He added the decoding functions for high tag 2 in the Proxmox client. So we can see it there. And in December, N4Rab added or made this door simulator. For me. He wanted to give me as a gift at the B-Sides London. And thank you, man. It's, it's an awesome gift. I'm very grateful for it. It's really, really nice. So, what more can you do with all this story about that? Let me show you how it looks like when we 
run the proxmod clients with it. If I go over here and I bring my little proxmod next to this one here and we put this Paxton net thing card up there. I don't know. Hopefully the reader doesn't disturb it. We can go for LF search. And it finds Paxton ID and you see it's 490872. And if we look at here, it's 4902. So yeah, that's the same. So we can do that. We can identify the size of card. It also identifies as a high tag too. If we go over to high tag two and run the check. Nope. Run the check. We find the specific Paxton password. Now, if we go and dump all this stuff, we can look at the data. And the data here is these two blocks, 26088. If I now go over to the browser, again, and entering that value there, and then that one value there, you see that this, uh, okay, oh. I will have to do this first, Oop. that was this, and then I'll do that, I'll do this and convert. And we get 49087259 there as well. That is pretty cool. So that is what we can do with that with a .NET in the Proxmod. If we go over and check with one of the switch two credentials. There you go. You will see that it uses these four blocks of data instead. And how to convert that is something that actually happened just a moment ago, you know, besides talking about it here a little bit, in the Proxmark world, another user from Dangerous Forums made some commits. I actually can go to the pull requests instead and I can look at the close ones and I can go for here by Jack Rib. He added some Paxton clone and Paxton nets, Paxton convert and Paxton switch Python scripts. So that's something else you can do, which I haven't talked about, is that you can now go from these ones to this blog post again from Natum and learn how to decode or emulate or downgrade attacks. That's something you can do actually. So you can try to explain this in a nice way. You can downgrade attack from high tech two to EM4100, or you can save that to a T5577 card or Q5 if you have those old ones. And you can also do a conversion from facility code card number and you convert that one into those four hex bytes. So you can actually emulate or put that in the UID on a UID changeable cards for some of the systems of these readers, the Paxton readers that reads uh, my fair classic UIDs or 14A UIDs. So you can do those things as well. And this is a great thing to have. And I'm very happy that uh, N4Rab did this one. I think you can add and modify and improve a Paxton functionality in the Proxmoc world now quite much easily. It's great research and great findings. So what more? Well, um, I want to thank all of my patrons and subscribers. Please subscribe and like. And uh, I hope you have a great weekend. And finally, I would like to say there are no elephants in this room. Have a good one.